Yup, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got into this situation. Well, I was clearing out the sandworm lair, the alternate layout, which is really long and tedious, but I took my time, I was super careful, never went into the next cave without having all my cooldowns back, I got through it without any danger, and then I swapped to the second floor, and I see two rares and a random boss, and like eight regular enemies just standing right next to the spawn. And immediately, there's a voice in my head that goes, well, this is obviously extremely dangerous if you take any other action than leaving. So let's come back, let's come back after the first prodigy definitely, maybe even later. This is just definitely not worth the risk. And if I fight this, I'm going to die, right? Yeah, that's clear. I'm going to die, let's run away. But then, there was a second voice. And that voice was more like, come on, come on, it's just like two rares and a random boss. When's the last time you were in danger in this run? That's right, never. You are so powerful, you, you're Sun Paladin, one of the best classes in the game. Let's just kill them, let's kill them, it's going to be fine. And for whatever reason, I went, yeah, this second voice, you know, I think that makes a lot more sense. So I decided to fight, and I thought I could pull the enemies one by one, but it turns out I definitely couldn't. So what you're seeing now is the first turn after I used one of my AoE talents and killed one of the white mobs, which means for the next five turns I cannot leave this zone, even if I could get to the stairs, which right now I can't even. Another interpretation of what you are looking at would be, you are looking at a dead character. Anytime you have this many debuffs, it becomes really bad because if any of the debuffs are ones that you need to cleanse, you won't be able to target them since you'll have like three other debuffs of that same type. And it begins what I call kind of a debuff death spiral, where you just end up being unable to do anything, unable to play the game. So at this point I was slowly coming to terms that I am just an idiot, and I decided to throw the run for no good reason. But then I calmed down a little bit and realized, okay, maybe there's still a way out, right? At first I thought about trying to fight, but just like in real life, I prefer to run away from my problems, and since I have a double movement infusion, I spotted the one line, the only one that I saw that has any chance of success. As you can see, the situation was even a lot worse than I originally thought, as there was also the Sandworm Queen just right around the corner, so fighting would never be successful. Even if I had all of my talents, which I don't, I don't think I could kill all these enemies. So instead, because I have the Belt of Unlife, which you know I've not used in, I don't know, countless runs, I can't remember the last time I used it, but situations like this are why you still always try and find it and even go to the shops and try and buy it, because here it gives me a legit chance of trying to survive. So I use these tiny gaps between the enemies, and with the global speed buff from Shalor and like 600% increased movement speed, I am thankfully able to slip right past them, and what I hope to find is a worm that has created a tunnel that is about to close, so that it cuts off all the enemies behind me, which would let me teleport out with the Rod of Recall. Unfortunately, in the one room that has already had the tunnel cut out, there are two more rares, which could be worse I guess, but it's definitely not ideal, so the only option I really have is to continue running, and then I get snared, or pinned. So even though I have created a distance of 10, 20 tiles, it's not looking too good. But the only play I really have is to continue running, especially since it looks like the worm on the right is going to create the same tunnel again. So I keep going, and luckily the tunnel actually closes on itself and cuts me off from the enemies. Here is where I make a crucial mistake. I put on the belt of unlife, but what I should have done is continue to the left to the next cave. For some reason, you know, I thought, okay, I'm good, I'm safe, I'm just going to recall. But then to my horror, I spotted that most of these enemies are sandworm tunnelers, and they can very easily get through the walls. So it is not over, in fact, it's just beginning. So all I really bought myself is the time to reset some of my cooldowns and heal back to full. I tried to dig myself out, but at this point it is far too late. So 29 turns of surviving this does not seem very possible. But thankfully I have my trusty psionic shield and you will see it do some serious work here. I don't know exactly how much damage it blocked because we can only see a short part of the lock, but I wouldn't be surprised it, it blocked hundreds of damage. At this point, what I start hoping for 
is that the random boss, which is a cursed mind slayer, will pull me to him. Because I know he has the talent, because he did it to me. While I was trying to pull the enemies one by one, he pulled me multiple times. So even though I could maybe kill him with the wave of power right now, I decide to keep him alive in the hopes that he will pull me back. And I already have both of my movement infusions back up, so I could just run back to the entrance to the level and hopefully get out. If that doesn't work, I literally can't move, so the only play I really have left is to just try and kill as many of them as possible, so they will make my escape easier if I do get pulled out. I managed to kill the Mind Slayer, and to my horror, the random boss made its way all the way to me. It's standing right next to me right now, above the Sandworm Queen. So any chances of him pulling me out are now fully gone. And as I get surrounded, and my psionic shield is about to come down, I realize that now that I am fully backed into a corner, I literally cannot move. Fighting my way out is the only possible play, even if it has a basically non-existence chance of being successful. I put a Mark of Light on the Sandworm Queen, which heals me for a percentage of damage I deal, and since I'm going to be spamming my Fearless Cleave, uh, I hoped that it would give me a bit of extra life. Unfortunately, um, I knew I needed to kill the random boss ASAP, and you can see he dealt 326 damage to me, and he had 9 HP left after my Fearless Cleave. 9 HP. And I think if I killed him before he did the damage, I would be in a pretty good spot, but then I had to waste a basic attack, because I got pinned so I couldn't feel as cleave anymore. So now I'm stuck there with like 300, 400 life, since I have some negative life, but I'm just kind of waiting to die. All of my spells are on cooldown. And there's even another rare just coming around the corner. I think that's the rogue from the beginning. But then I realize that there is still actually a way out. Because if you look in the top left, I am 84% to the next level. And when you level up, you get fully healed. And since I have managed to clear out most of the rares and the random boss, this could actually save me. So I opt for the Fearless Cleave because I felt like I needed for the damage, and even though I could have healed for like 100 health, which gave me a higher chance to survive until the next turn, the Sandworm Queen still had a decent amount of health. But I do survive, right now I have like maybe 100 more life, and my Absorption Strike comes off cooldown, which is a massively damaging attack and I managed to kill the Sandworm Queen from 365 life, and level up, and heal to full HP. I had hoped to pick up my Prodigy, and since I am trying to kind of roleplay the Avatar of the Distant Sun evolution, I wanted to take the Irresistible Sun, but unfortunately I didn't have enough light or fire damage dealt. And it's not entirely over, this Acid Zone actually deals a lot of damage, so I can't really stay in place and just stand in it, but with the help of the trusty movement infusions, I run over to the rogue, finish him off, then kill all the other enemies and safely teleport out with my heart of the Sandworm Queen, making this the most ridiculous sequence of events I think I've ever successfully pulled off in Tales of Magiel. I've had some pretty clutch moments, nothing really comes close to this, because this was a combination of a lot of things going just right, so I felt this was a moment worth talking about. And then, a few levels later, I died to a random unique, because I yet again made a really stupid decision, but we don't need to talk about that. I am giving up on Sun Paladin for the moment, though. If you want a quick guide on Sun Paladin, uh, don't pick Irresistible Sun on level 25. Because you don't need damage on Sun Paladin, you have plenty of it, in fact. So I think if I picked something like Ethereal Form, and most of those deaths past level 25 might not have happened. But then I wouldn't get to roleplay the Avatar of the Distant Sun Prodigy, so... There's just no good outcome. The other build I want to try for Sun Paladin is the Fallen class evolution, which is supposed to be even worse, at least to take on level 25. So I guess I just like torturing myself a little bit. Anyways, I started a different run on Temporal Warden, so that's probably what the next guide is going to be about. And I'm excited for that because it's one of my favorite classes. It's such a cool design, executed so well, and it's so much fun to play. So until then, thanks for watching.